Why is scoliosis more common in females? As patients are diagnosed with scoliosis and they do research, the most common thing they find out is that scoliosis is way more common in females than in males. And so, and why is this? You know, and what we find is that scoliosis has a lot of things that we don't know about. You know, scoliosis has been around for hundreds of years. And unfortunately, we don't know a lot about it, meaning in terms of causation. We don't, there's a lot of it we don't understand. There's a lot of it that we can't tell you why you have it, why you don't have it. We don't understand 100% why some people progress and don't progress. But we, there is some things that we can tell you that we do understand. What we don't understand about scoliosis is typically its idiopathic nature. We really don't understand why some patients would develop scoliosis and why some patients don't. We don't understand 100% why some curves stop at 10 or 15 degrees and why some other curves progress to 115 degrees. Um, we don't can't really predict 100% why that, why that happens. Um, but we do definitely know that scoliosis is much more prevalent in females than males. It's literally 10 times more likely to be present in a female, and it's 10 times more likely uh, to progress in a female. Now, what we don't understand also is, is it just because when, ki when females actually get checked, meaning when kids move, typically they go from a pediatrician visit into a um, non-pediatrician visit, most people stop going to pediatricians around 13, 14 years of age. Well, most girls are going through their growth spurts in that age. When, when people stop going to pediatricians around 14 years of age, uh, this is when boys are going through their growth spurts. So maybe they just don't get diagnosed as much. We don't know this, but we definitely know in terms of diagnoses, uh, females are much more likely, 10 times more likely, and 10 times more likely to progress. So what are some theories why? why? Why does this happen? Well, one thing is definitely we mentioned is the time of they go through growth spurt. Um, they go through growth spurt earlier. They're typically being checked more often by their pediatrician. They also, since they go through growth spurt earlier, they tend to have less coordination centers developed in their brain. So there is maybe a postural thing. They also go through growth spurts in a shorter duration, meaning gr girls go through growth spurts typically in about a two year period of time, where boys go through growth spurts a little bit longer. So it tends to be longer and slower, where girls go through a f uh, faster and shorter growth spurt. Um, maybe some type of hormonal involvement, meaning there's asymmetrical hormone development or some abnormal hormone development or some strong hormones in females that are more related to spinal cord and bone development. Um, females tend to go through growth spurts typically when they're much thinner and younger, where boys tend to go through growth spurts a little bit older, a little bit more, uh, more muscularly mature. Um, so therefore it could be a BMI relationship, but really honestly, these are all speculations. We really don't know. These are all theoretical. But the biggest thing to understand is that puberty, when they go through puberty, is when we know curves progress. So all of these curves that progress, those 10 times more likely to progress in females, all start in juvenile age. It means something happened that caused a curve very young in life, probably before they were five years old, and then they kind of slowly progress. Girls start to go through puberty somewhere between 10 and 12 years of age, where boys tend to go somewhere through puberty somewhere around 14 years of age. It's this early onset of puberty that we believe is why we be, uh, that, scoli that scoliosis is much more prevalent in females. And since they go through this trigger of progression in a shorter duration, meaning by 12 to 14, most girls are done growing by 14. So this 12 to 14, this two year period of time, they go through this rapid growth, rapid growth leads to this rapid progression which unfortunately can cause curves to progress more commonly in females. When boys go through puberty, so in this 14 year range, and boys can grow all the way until 18 years of age, sometimes 19 and 20. So we're looking at a two year puber uh, growth spurt versus a, a four to six year growth spurt. Uh, it's much slower. So since it's much slower and they're more mature and they have more posture centers developed in their brain, the, this is what we think. But honestly, we really don't know. We can't really tell you why why. But we know that that growth spurt is the trigger of progression. We don't know what caused it. We don't know why it happened. We, all we know is that this tends to cause the progression in an, in a, in an adolescent idiopathic case. 
the causation has absolutely even more variables. There's about 80 or so variables and, and observations that could be associated with the causation of progression um, or the causation of scoliosis, I'm sorry. And this causation, a lot of people say, well, it's, it's, they think it's genetics. And we know it's not just genetics either because they've done studies on identical twins and they find that all identical twins both have scoliosis. And a lot of times identical twins, one will have a much more severe scoliosis and the other one won't. I've seen many uh, twins that one has scoliosis, one doesn't. One has severe scoliosis one has a mild, one has a left thoracic scoliosis, and the other one has a right lumbar, and there's no similarity. So it's not just genetic, unfortunately. Um, so that, that the good news is it means that if you have scoliosis, it doesn't mean that your kids are always going to have it. But it is familiar. So we know if we see one family member have a, a rapidly progressing scoliosis, it's I would definitely be more interested in checking all the females because it's more likely they're going to develop scoliosis because there is a familiar tendency, but not a, not a genetic causation. So since we know females are more likely to develop scoliosis and they're more likely to progress, we should be definitely looking at females more quickly and more often during their growth phase than we, than we do with males because they, they go, go through a faster uh, growth spurt and it's more likely a hormonal di driven problem or process because they're growing so quickly and that growth causes the curve to progress. So if you have, uh, if you have a female or anybody in, the scoli anybody in your family that has scoliosis and, you're, and you have grandkids or kids that are, that are going, through this, going into this growth phase, this 10, 11 years of age, you wanna be checking these kids more often because unfortunately, like we know, Females are more likely to develop scoliosis, like we said, 10 times more likely, and they're 10 times more likely to progress. So you want to check them very often during this growth phase, not just yearly, but I would say like every three months, because unfortunately, growth spurts are very fast. That means progression tends to be very fast. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.